guys! My name is Kay and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, isi-share ko sa inyo kung ano ba ang mga struggles ng isang OFW and paano namin nilalabanan ang mga struggles na to. So if you want to see more, then please keep on watching. Disclaimer lang pala guys, these struggles are based on my own experience. You might have other struggles rather than the ones that I will discuss. So if you have other struggles na pwede nyong i-share and kung paano nyo pinaglabanan ng mga struggles niyan, please comment down below in the comment section. And by the way, if hindi ka pa nakasubscribe sa channel ko, please, please mag-subscribe ka na and ring the notification bell para updated ka sa aking mga uh, bagong updates. And... Without further ado, simula na natin. Quick background, I am an OFW and I am based here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I have been here for 3 years and 9 months. Actually, I am bound to be leaving soon. So, inaantay ko lang yung mga papers ko and final benefits ko. Pero, uuwi na ako ng Philippines soon. And, I am actually planning to become a, an OFW on another country. So, Itong video na to is very timely, not only for me, but also dun sa mga ibang aspiring OFWs na gusto magkaroon ng idea kung ano ba yung mga pinagdadaanan ng mga OFW. Kasi mostly nakikita lang ng mga relatives natin, ng mga families and friends natin na, that we're doing okay. Kasi syempre hindi mo naman ipopost sa social media kung ano yung mga problema na napipil mo while working abroad. So, this is to just shed some light. Hindi naman ito para ipafeel sa mga family and friends natin na miserable yung buhay natin dito. Ito lang yung para ma-share lang, ma-set yung expectation mo as an OFW na kung ano ba yung mga pinagdadaanan ng bawat isa while working on a different country. So, without further ado, simulan na natin. So, the first uh, struggle would have to be homesickness. So, if nasa ibang bansa ka, syempre, there are a lot of things that you'll miss back home. So, it could be your family, yung food, yung mga bagay na nakasanayan mo while you are in the Philippines. Syempre, di ba, being in a foreign land, medyo mahohomesick ka, lalo na at wala ka namang means or yung way para makauwi ng mabilisan sa family mo. Most especially if you are here in the Middle East or if nasa US ka or sa UK, medyo mahal yung pamasahe and malayo. So you have to travel by plane. Unlike pag nasa other parts of the Philippines ka lang, nagbabas ka lang, madaling makauwi sa family mo. Pero since nga it's a plane ride away, medyo kailangan tayong humanap ng way para mapaglabanan ng homesickness. So, in my case, since nga andito naman yung husband ko, I feel homesick, yes, but not as much as, kumbaga eh, yung iba sobrang homesick ako, homesick ng konting push na lang, eh, sobrang homesick na. Parang ganun, parang nafe-feel ko din naman pag minsan pag homesick ako lalo na kapag holiday season. Syempre masaya na kasama mo yung family mo. So, medyo nakakalungkot 'yon. So, I have ways of combating my homesickness by uh yung syempre may mga messenger naman na available. You could uh get in touch with your families and friends. Pwede kayong mag-chat, video chat if you have time. Pero if there is no way, lalo na at may time difference, you can find hobbies na makakapagpalibang sa'yo. Like cooking, ako natuto ako dito mag-bake, tuto ako magluto ng kung ano-ano. I watch YouTube videos about cooking, I do YouTube videos that I find relevant na makakatulong sa mga ibang tao. So ito yung naging diversion ko aside from going out with my husband. And you also have to find your uh, support group dito sa ibang bansa. Uh, dito sa Saudi Arabia, medyo strong yung support group kasi maraming Pilipino dito. So, just make sure na hindi kayo madadala sa tokso or sa, <laughs> sa bugso ng damdamin nyo. Most especially if you're in a committed relationship. Pag may asawa ka or may boyfriend ka. So, make sure na hindi ka madadarang, hindi ka magiging marupok. Just make sure you find good company. Malilibang ka din naman dito. Meron namang ways para malibang ka. Like, go to the park. Minsan, you could go to the mall. Retail therapy. 
yun nga. So, you have to find hobbies and interests and people to enjoy it with. Just make sure na alam nyo lang yung rules kasi dito sa Saudi Arabia, bawal yung boyfriend-girlfriend na lalabas kayo, boy and girl. So, medyo strict sila. Although, medyo open na sila ngayon. Hindi na nila sinisita yung mga group. Pero, just be careful. So, the second struggle would be being independent. So, nasa ibang bansa ka, so you are alone, you have to do things yourself. So, like cooking food, doing groceries, doing your laundry, you also have to clean the house. Siyempre, if you are sharing a flat with other people, kailangan malinis, marunong kang maglinis, marunong kang magluto. Kasi hindi sa lahat ng oras ay meron kang maasahan na magluto para sa'yo. Minsan, magkakaiba kayo ng taste buds. So, kailangan matuto kang magluto. Marami namang ways na matuto magluto. May mga YouTube channels na available. Pwede nyo panoorin. Panoodin nyo step by step. Start with the easiest one. Sa akin, proven na fail-proof ang adobo. So, if you are someone na nagsisimula pa lang magluto, and ayaw nyo na ng prito, ayaw nyo na ng noodles, ayaw nyo na ng egg, mga hotdog, try nyo magluto ng adobo. Manood kayo ng mga YouTube videos instead na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood nyo sa YouTube, mga uh, kung ano-anong mga kalokohan, manood kayo ng mga YouTube videos kung paano magluto. Matututunan nyo rin yan. It's terrifying at first, lalo dun sa mga walang experience magluto, pero kailangan matutunan nyo yan kasi you are... Working individually sa ibang bansa. So, you have to learn to cook your own food. Kasi mas mahal kapag bibili ka ng food. Mas makakamura ka kapag ka niluluto mo yung food mo. And also, for your groceries, kailangan marunong kang mag-budget ng pera mo. Kasi you don't have your mom, you don't have your family. Minsan, wala din yung asawa mo dito to do the budgeting of the uh, money for groceries. So, kailangan matuto ka rin. Matuto kang mag-manage ng pera mo. Kailangan matuto ka rin maglaba. May washing machine naman dito. So, matututunan mo yan. You have to be very independent. Yun nga. So, majority ng mga life skills, if hindi mo yan natutunan, pwede mo naman tingnan sa YouTube. May mga video naman yan. You can find almost every skill in YouTube. Kung ano man yung gusto mong matutunan. Ultimo kung paano magtanggal ng mancha ng damit. You'll find it in YouTube. So, if you have time, you have to learn to become independent. So, number three. So, being in a foreign land, makukulture shock ka. So, culture shock is one of the most challenging struggle na ma-experience mo in a foreign land. Most especially sa isang lugar na kaiba yung religion mo, kaiba yung salita mo. Like here in Saudi Arabia, they are practicing Islam and they are speaking Arabic. So, nung unang dating namin dito, I was so terrified to talk to people kasi feeling ko hindi nila ako naiintindihan. Tapos, yung mga alam ko, mga basic lang na hindi ko alam. Kailangan matutunan mo na sabihin na hindi ka marunong mag-Arabic. Kailangan matutunan mo kung paano pumunta sa bahay mo, kailangan matutunan mo kung paano sumakay ng taxi, kung paano bumili. Yun yung mga common. But as you work, kailangan matutunan mo rin yung mga work-related terminologies. Which took me a year. As in, natatako talaga akong makipag-usap sa mga tao. Kasi baka hindi nila ako maintindihan, magkamali ako. Eh, paano kung walang kasama na marunong mag-Arabic? So, medyo nakakatakot yon So, it's really terrifying. So, just make sure na go back to YouTube. So, lahat ng tips ko nasa YouTube lang din yan. Makikita nyo sa YouTube kung ano yung... Meron mga Arabic 101, may mga ganyan. So, find the time na mag-tingin-tingin. Pwede rin magbasa-basa kayo. Kasi minsan pag binabasa, nakikita mo kung paano siya i-pronounce in the manner na naiintindihan mo. Kasi minsan, pag sa ano, mahirap sundan yung kung paano nila sinasalita kasi marami silang parang mga rolling R, ganyan. So, yan. So, language, kailangan matutunan mo yan. Hindi mo man ma-perfect at least meron kang way para makipag-usap sa kanila. And nakakaintindi naman sila ng English kahit konti. So, kahit yung mga basic Arabic lang, kailangan mo matutunan. 
So, sa religion naman, yun nga, so you have to respect their religion. Hindi naman, ibig sabihin na nandito ka sa isang country na Islam yung pinapractice, they will convince you to become one. So, you just have to respect their religion, i-observe mo din yung, I mean, i-respeto mo lang naman sila kasi they have five prayer, meron silang Ramadan, so they do fasting. So, i-respect mo yan. Kailangan, hindi ka nila makikita kumakain while they are on fasting. Hindi ka naman nila inuobliga na magpalit ng religion if you really don't want to. Siyempre, di ba, kailangan i-respect mo lang din yung religion nila. So, other uh, culture shock uh, related na ano is yung mga nationalities. So, you will be exposed to different nationalities. So, I have worked with Egyptians, Saudi, Bangladeshi. So, you have to treat other people with respect or regardless of their nationality. Kahit na ano pang klaseng nationality yung tao na yan. And with the patients, we deal with different kinds of patients. May mga Yemeni, may mga Afghan, may mga Asian like us, may mga Chinese. So, iba-iba. So, you have, you just have to find a common ground na para magkaintindihan kayo for you to provide the service or the care that they are seeking. Most especially kami, we are working in a hospital. So, minsan challenging talaga sa amin. Lalo yung mga hindi talaga marunong mag-English or mag-Arabic kahit konti. Like, there's an instance na nakareceive kami ng patient na Chinese, hindi talaga siya marunong magsalita ng Arabic or English. So, kailangan ano, uh, you will find a way for him to understand you and for you to understand him. Kasi parang tinuturo lang niya kung ano yung masakit and then you're providing care pero hindi mo alam if it works for him. So, you just have to look for nonverbal cues to let you know that nare-relieve yung pain nung patient mo. So, number four would be financial stability. So, you are working abroad. So, marami kang makikita na opportunities for you to have a financial stability. So, you have to be wise when it comes to your money. So, remittances mo, yung savings mo, and yung mga impulse buying mo. So, you have to Make sure na you are living within your means. So, kung ang sweldo mo ay ito lang, huwag kang gumastos ng ganito kadami. Parang ganun eh. Kasi, syempre, di ba, you have to make sure na lahat ng mga responsibilidad mo ay mapapaglaanan mo ng pera. Like, yung mga amortization mo sa mga bahay na binabayaran mo sa Pilipinas. If you're paying for rent, if you are paying for school, if may mga kapatid ka na nag-aaral or if may family member ka pang nag-aaral, if there's is if there's a family member na kailangan ng medical assistance like yung mga maintenance ng mga parents nyo, ng mga lolo't lola nyo. So you have to make sure that all of it is taken care of. So kailangan hatiin mo yung pera mo wisely. Pero make sure then na you allot money for your savings as well. Hindi lahat ng pera ay ipapadala mo. Paano kung dumating yung panahon na kailangan mo nang umuwi? Paano kung hindi natin masabi na yung company mo, eh, kailangan ka nang pauwiin? Kasi since you are an expat in another country, hindi natin sure kung i-renew pa nila tayo, kung okay pa yung company natin. So, we have to make sure na may hawak tayo laging pera. So, make sure that you have savings. Then, yan ang isang problema nating mga OFW yung mga savings natin. Uh, majority, hindi ko sinasabing lahat, majority sa atin, eh, walang mga savings kasi laging may sale. So, since nga laging may sale, dito sa Saudi Arabia, ang dali nilang mag-issue ng credit card. So, wag kayo masyadong malululong sa credit card like I did. Ang tagal kong pinagbayaran yung credit card ko kasi lagi ako swipe, swipe, swipe three times a day. So, yung mga sale, it's everywhere. As in, lagi kang may makikitang sale. Kahit sa grocery, kahit saan. Merong sale. You just have to weigh in if it's something that you want or it, it's something that you need. So, unahin mo yung mga needs mo and then save up. And if you have enough savings, then that's the time that you can buy your wants. At least, hindi ka mababaon sa utang. 
So lastly, yung mga other risk. So first gen is yung safety. So you have to ensure that you are always safe. Huwag ka lalabas mag-isa, most especially pag babae ka and if hindi naman kailangan, huwag kang lumabas, most especially if you're here. Hindi sa din discourage ko lumabas yung mga females ha, pero there are instances na yung mga females nagkakaroon ng mga masamang experiences. So just make sure you be vigilant. So pag sasakay ka ng ano ng Uber or ng Karim, make sure you inform your workmates or any relative kung saan ka pupunta or dapat may kasama ka as much as possible kung may mahanap ka na kasama. And if in the event na may problema ka in your workplace, we have our consulate. Pwede nyo silang kontakin. Pwede kayong humingi ng tulong sa kanila if wala, if all else fails. Pero hopefully, huwag tayong dumating sa sitwasyon na ganun. So, marami pa. Marami pa mga ibang struggles out there. But these are the struggles that I have experience and I'm just speaking for my own experience. Ha? Huwag nyo naman akong ibash kung hindi ito yung mga experience nyo or if you have more struggles than I do. So, hindi naman lahat ng struggles ko eh na-mention ko dito. May mga iba na nakalimutan ko na siguro. But these are the most common and I think uh, may mga ibang tao na nakaka-experience din ng mga struggles na to. So, hopefully all is well. Sana lahat tayo eh nasa maayos na working situation. For whilst you're abroad, I am hoping na lahat tayo eh safe. So, yun lang yung video ko for today. So, if you like videos like this, please hit the like button. Comment down below if may mga struggles kayo na hindi ko na-mention so that we can help other OFWs like me. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!